Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you, Father. We've been studying the book of Acts. And so um, we're now on chapter 5. We've had a few interruptions, you know, Father's Day, 4th of July. But um, turn with me, if you would, to Acts chapter 5. And the title of our message this morning is, Who Are We Going to Obey? Who are we going to obey? Every day we have that choice of what voice we will obey, that we will adhere to, or that we will follow. Oftentimes it is the voice uh, of our flesh, um, and, uh, or perhaps the spirit of the world that is operating, mingling with our flesh. Um, and um, we need to be able to uh, divide that voice, distinguish the Lord's voice from that voice. Amen? Because we do obey the voice in our head. Amen? Now, I wish 24-7, every moment of every, not only waking hour, but even sleeping and waking hour, I wish the only voice that I heard I wish the only voice that I knew was the voice of the Lord, the voice of his word. But until the Lord comes back and the uh, father of lies, the God of this world, is cast into the lake of fire along with the Antichrist and the false prophet and, amen, and all those demons, you know, we're, are, we're going to have to do spiritual warfare and we're going to have to learn how to discern the Lord's voice from the other voice that we're so familiar with. Amen? You know, if you all your life had followed the, the voice of fear, it's hard. It's hard to, uh, you know, separate yourself from something that's so familiar. Amen? But the Lord... He can give us the power to be able to begin to separate from those spirits that are, no, that are no longer to have any place in us, in our head, in our mind, in our soul. Amen? Father, your word is powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, being able to divide asunder soul and spirit. And uh, Lord, right now, in the name of Yeshua, anoint this word, teach us, Father God, the reason why this is in the Bible, Acts chapter 5, in Yeshua's name, Acts chapter 5, and now again, this is, um, you know, the first um, century messianic believers, there's so much going on here. And, um, and the Lord is doing miracles through Peter and John, Kepha, that's the Hebrew name for Peter, Kepha, and Yochanan, the Hebrew name for John, and just amazing miracles. A lame man was healed and really upset the religious authorities. It happened on, you know, a lot of these healings are happening on the Sabbath. It's really outraging them. But God is moving so powerfully that all the believers are coming together with one heart, one soul. 5,000 of them get saved in one day. I mean, it's like Billy Graham crusades before there was a Billy Graham. Amen? And great things are happening. And there's so much so that they're all, in fact, many of them that are, have houses and lands that are more the well-to-do, you know, and, and um, property owners are selling, you know, their properties and, and their real estate and uh, bringing the proceeds to the apostles' feet. And one fella is uh, really singled out by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, Barnabas. He's called the son of encouragement, the son of exhortation. And now we read in chapter 5, Another couple, but they are the very opposite of Barnabas and many of these saints. And so we read, but a man named Ananias, along with his wife Sapphira, they sold a piece of property and kept back some of the price for himself. 
and with his wife's full knowledge. And bringing only a portion of it, he laid it at the apostles' feet. And you have to stop and think about this for a moment. What was wrong with that? Well, they were acting as if they sold, you know, everything that they sold, they were laying at the apostles' feet. They were acting as if they gave the whole amount of all their property, whatever it was, and they were acting in a not the Holy Spirit. All right, we read on. But Kepha said, Ananias... Why has Satan, Hasatan, filled your heart to lie to the Ruach HaKadosh and keep back some of the price of the land? How did he know that? Whose voice was he listening to? Whoa! Well, some call that a, you know the uh, word of wisdom or word of knowledge, we say in some circles, you know. Wow, if there ever was a word of knowledge, you know, or discerning of spirits. You know, he, he recognized something was not right going on there with this fella here, Anam Ananias, and God spoke to him. And uh, while it remained, Kepha said, unsold, did it not remain yours? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. And he heard these words, and Ananias fell down and breathed his last. And a great fear covered came over all those who heard it. Whoa. Everybody go, whoa. I, I, if you were not totally in the Holy Spirit, you, you would have maybe peed yourself. All right? Come on. That was like, whoa. The fear of God came down on them all. And uh, who was Ananias listening to? You know, who was Ananias obeying? Whose voice was Ananias adhering to? Whose voice was Ananias, you know, following and obeying? Hasatan. Now, <laughs> I don't, I want you to understand, Ananias is a believer. Come on now. I don't believe he was a non-believer. There was nothing for a non-believer that would appeal, attract a non-believer to be there with the apostles like Kepha and Yochanan and all that was going on and they were selling their properties and real estate and, you know, uh, they, they were turning in their bitcoins, you know, their green stamps, you know, and laying it all at the apostles' feet, you know. I, that's not appealing. That's not attractive, you know, to non-believers, unbelievers. I believe Ananias was a believer. But God smote him. Just as he did in the past. If you remember the whole time of Moses, remember a rebellion rose up by a fellow by the name of Korah and Dathan and Abiran, and God smote them. Or when Aaron's very own sons went into the Holy of Holies, you know, and, and, and a time and in a place and in a way that was not commanded by the Lord, and he smote them, even though they were Aaron's sons. Nadab and Abihu. And here likewise, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, I want you to hear this. God hasn't changed. Yeshua hasn't changed. The rule of HaKadosh hasn't changed. Let's read on now. Verse 6, the young men got up and they covered him up and uh, carrying him out, they buried him. 
Now there elapsed an interval of about three hours, and his wife came in, Mrs. Ananias, because they don't mention her name, Mrs. Ananias came in, not knowing what happened. And Kephar responded to her, tell me whether you sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, oh yeah, yes, yes we did. That was the price. And Kephar said to her, why is it that you have agreed together to put the Ruach of Adonai to the test. Behold, the feet of those who carried out your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out as well. And immediately, this doesn't make enough noise, this sound. That's why you need a wooden pulpit sometimes. And immediately she fell at his feet, breathed her last, and the young men came in and found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband, and great fear came upon the whole church and over all who heard of these things. Who was Mrs. Ananias obeying? Who was she listening to? Who was she following? Hasatan. 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 What lesson was the Ruach HaKadosh trying to teach the first century messianic community, but also what lessons is he's trying to teach all of us this morning as well? Amen? What lesson? We can never fool and never deceive the Lord. I need somebody to make a very strong amen. amen. We cannot fool the Lord. We can fool ourselves. We can fool the next guy. Okay? We, we, can, we can fool others. You know, what's that old saying? You know, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. You cannot fool the Lord. You can fool others. You can fool yourself. There's a lot of people who are deceiving themselves. They're fooling themselves. And that's why their conscience bothers them. And that's why they get angry at me and you. Because we represent the truth. We represent the Lord. We represent the conscience and the word of God and the law of the Lord, which is perfect, converting the soul. And they don't like it and it makes them angry. And that's why we're called haters. And... Um, Oh, my goodness. And Kepha said to Mrs. Hananias, Why have you conspired together to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? Satan is the father of lies. Every lie, every deception, every falsehood, everything dishonest is from Hasatan. The God of this world, the spirit, the, 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 uh, the spirit that operates in the world, the spirit of Antichrist. And warning, 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 do not put the Lord to the test. In other words, do not tempt the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. I need it stronger. Amen. One more time. Do not put the Lord to the test. Now Yeshua, well, Kepha quotes Moses. And Yeshua, in Matthew chapter 4, I'm just turning to Matthew chapter 4 quickly. And Yeshua here is quoting Moses. And... Uh, Kepha was quoting Yeshua, who was quoting Moses. Matthew chapter 4, verses 5, 6, and 7. The devil took Yeshua, he's on the mount, and um, after his t being tempted in the wilderness uh, for 40 days, the devil took him to the holy city uh, and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. 
And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. You know why? Nothing will happen to you. Because it is written that he'll command his angels concerning you. And on their hands, they will bear you up so that you won't even strike your foot against the stone. And Yeshua said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And he's quoting Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Right in the Torah. And verse six, uh, six verses, uh, chapter 6, verse 16. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test as you tested him at Massa, that place in the wilderness. Back to uh, Acts chapter 5. Oh, dear ones. Don't put the Lord your God to the test. Let the spirit of the fear of God come upon you. Let, let, the, let the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, it's the beginning of knowledge, it's, it's the hate evil. Let it come upon you always, always. And never put the Lord God to the test that you can operate knowingly, consciously operate or willfully operate in any kind of lie, any kind of deception with your finances, with your relationships, with your marriage. Don't cheat. Don't, don't even, don't cheat on your taxes. Don't, don't cheat on, you know, it, it begins in your thoughts, in your imagination. We need the fear of God, amen? We need the fear of God, which gives us a strong confidence. And, and when, you are, when you realize that maybe you're not operating in complete truth, in complete, then repent. Repent, amen? That's how we, it just, at that very moment, just say, all right, I'm sorry. I, Lord, I repent. If you need to repent to your wife, to your husband, to your someone else, you just say, Lord, just forgive me. Forgive me, cleanse me. I don't, want, I don't want to walk in darkness. Any sin, any dishonesty is darkness. Amen? Who are we going to obey? And um, now we're beginning to see a completely, a radically changed Peter, a radically changed Kepha. Look at uh, verse um, 11 again. Great fear fell upon the whole ecclesia uh, and all who heard these things. Verse 12, at the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were taking place amongst the people and they were all in one accord at Solomon's portico. If you remember, Yeshua was always in that area walking along uh, Solomon's portico on the days of the Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah. But none of the rest dared to associate with them. However, the people held them in high esteem. All, all the more believers in the Lord, multitudes of men and women were constantly being added to their number. This is happening in many places like China and uh, places in Africa and even places like Iran, uh, South Africa. Um, not so much here in America, but may that day come again because uh, it's happened many times within our history. Amen? And that's why we were at, together at Pittsburgh Praise last Sunday. That's exactly why. Praying for revival. And uh, to such an extent 
that they were carrying even the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and pallets so that when Peter came by, at least the shadow of Peter might fall on any one of them. And also the people from the cities and the vicinities of Jerusalem were coming together, bringing people who were sick, who were afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all being healed. There was such an extraordinary anointing on Peter, on Kepha, that even when his shadow fell upon people, somehow there was miracles, signs and wonders, and healing. That is pretty amazing for a man not many days before trembled before little girls and denied the Lord three times before the rooster crowed. Amen? What the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, can do with a man and with a woman. Amen? A totally radically changed Kepha. He's now walking and operating in a supernatural anointing just like Yeshua. And folks, that stuff can't be faked. And nobody who walks in any kind of an anointing where there's real power, there's no self-promotion. Listen to me, really, please. There is no self-promotion. If miracles are taking place and God uses this vessel or that vessel, I want to tell you there is no self-promotion. All right? Otherwise, those miracles are fake and they won't last. And they'll go back home and, and whatever manifestation won't last long. Who are we going to obey? Who is Kepha? Obeying, whose voice is he following and listening to? The voice of his shepherd, amen? Of the Ruach HaKodesh. Now, opposition and persecution heats up. We read in verse 7 18, and 18, you know, the enemy doesn't like it when uh, anybody it starts to be used of the Lord and God is really blessing them you know I, I just happened to see this really cool little like 20 second um, uh, video of Denzel Washington who I happen to really like a lot and and he, somebody was interviewing him and right you know on Facebook it was pretty cool he said well you know he said if the devil ignores person, if he's ignoring somebody, you know, you know that, you know, he's saying, leave, leave him alone. He's, he's actually very useful to me. <laughs> you know, he's actually, you know, he's one of my, my guys or gals. But if the devil starts attacking someone and he starts really harassing you know, and getting, you know, resisting and, and, and trying to attack someone because they are being anointed by the Lord and God is moving in their lives. And the enemy's trying to curtail that and trying to hinder that and trying to, you know, uh, trying to sidetrack you. Amen? Amen? Whose voice are we listening to? Whose voice? Are we following? Verse 17, a high priest rose up along with the associates, that is, the sect of the Sadducees. They didn't believe in the resurrection or angels or spirits. They were sad, you see. That's an old little humor, right? They were filled with jealousy. Let me tell you something. If you are ever kind of dealing with some jealousy of another person, that is not the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh. You need to, if you're jealous for the Lord, you're zealous and jealous for the Lord, that's the voice of the Spirit. If you're jealous over another person, a brother or a sister or family member or anybody else, I want to tell you, you're not listening to the right voice. Who are you going to obey? 
Whose voice are you obeying? Now, the high priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they're not obeying the right voice. They were filled with jealousy. They laid hands on the apostles, that's Kephon, Yochanan, and put them in public jail. And uh, I love this next story here, this next chronicle of what took place. But during the night, the angel of the Lord open the gates of the prison and taking them out. He tells them, go stand and speak to the people in the temple the whole message of this life. And upon hearing this, they entered the temple about daybreak and began to teach. God sent a jail-breaking angel. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. <laughs> a jail-breaking angel. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, um, and so upon hearing this, uh, okay, now when the high priest and his associates came, they called the council together, even all the Senate and the sons of Israel, and they uh, sent orders to the prison house for them to be brought, and the officers who came didn't find them in the prison. They returned and reported back saying, we have found the prison house locked quite securely and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened up, <laughs> there was no Kepha, no Yochanan, no Peter and John. <laughs> we found no one there. And then when the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed. Can you just see them with their hands over their heads going, Oy vey, oy vey, is mia. <laughs> and someone came and reported to them that the men whom he was put in prison, they're standing out in the temple teaching all the people. <laughs> Listen, I believe that there are times when the Lord laughs. I believe there are times when the Lord has a really great laugh. Do you agree with me? In fact, turn with me, keep your place here. Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2. And I tell you what, when the Lord laughs, I want to hear it. Amen? Hallelujah. Very famous messianic psalm. Why did a heathen rage and the people devise a vain thing? The kings of the earth take their counsel and the rulers together take counsel together against the Lord and against his Messiah. Now, well, that's what it says in Hebrew. Against his anointed, Mashiach, his Messiah. Let us tear their fetters apart, cast away their cords from us. You know, we don't want anything to do with them. We're not going to believe what the laws of God say anymore and what the principles of the scripture say anymore. We don't, we believe that, uh, you know, uh, that people can love anybody who they want and any kind of sexual, you know, thing they want to do, we'll call that love. We should just let them, you know, lust themselves to death and do whatever they want to do with whoever they want to do it. We believe in same-sex marriage. Yeah, a man can marry a man, a woman, a woman, and it's going to get worse. They're going to marry other things as well. Now there's threesomes, you know, and we, you know, all these crazy, oh, we believe that a boy, if he doesn't, if he thinks he's a girl, he could be, a, he could be a girl just because he thinks he's a girl or feels he's a girl or a boy, you know, thinks the, or a girl thinks she's a boy. It's idiotic. Amen. It's insane. Why did a heathen rage and the rulers imagine a vain thing? And then look at verse four. He who sits in the heaven laughs. He who sits in the heaven laughs. Everybody do what Brian just did. Everybody go, ha, 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 ha. Oh, my goodness. The Lord, he who sits in the heaven laughs. And the Lord scoffs at them. I believe God is laughing right here. He sends a jailbreak angel, all right? And uh, breaks out the apostles. They, they go to the very temple, and they're doing the very thing they were told not to do, they were commanded not to do. 
And God is laughing. They go to the prison and they don't find everything is locked up securely. The guards are still there by the, you know, by the jail cells, and there's no apostles. God had himself a good one. Amen? He had himself a good one. You can imagine the angels around his throne. Listen, we're gonna laugh an awful lot. We're gonna laugh away every tear when the Lord comes back. Come on now. We're going to laugh away every tear, every heartache, every anxiety, every trouble. We're going to laugh away. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, I love to hear my grandson laugh. To me, I could hear the laughter of God in my little grandson's laughter. I love it. I love it. Praise the Lord. And, um, and so we read on now. Uh, when, uh, verse 27, when, the, when they had brought them, they stood them, the apostles, before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, we gave you strict orders not to command, uh, to uh, continue teaching in this name. And yet you had filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. <laughs> Kepha, Peter, and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. Who are you going to obey? You've got to walk in the light now. If you are ever dragged before judges, and drag before authorities later on, who knows, all right? You've got to walk in complete truth and light now, amen? amen? Peter, he's no longer trembling, and these aren't little girls. These are the rulers of Israel, the leaders of Israel. And he says to them, we must obey God rather than men. Ha, you know, Kepha is saying, who are we then to obey? You, mere men, mere flesh and blood? Um, or the Lord our God? The Lord our God. And the God of our fathers raised up Yeshua, whom you had put to death by hanging on the tree. And he is the one God exalted to his right hand as a prince and a savior to grant repentance to Israel and for forgiveness of sins and we are witnesses of these things and so also is the Ruach HaKodesh whom God has given to those who obey him. Faith and obedience operate in the same plane. Faith and obedience, trust and obedience operate in the same plane. It is the obedience of the faith. Amen? And the faith's obedience. And, um, and so you see this theme continually, especially here in the book of Acts, this biblical theme underlying everything the apostles are saying and doing. We are witnesses of him. We are witnesses of his death, his passion, his burial, his resurrection. And so also is the Holy Spirit. We are his witnesses. You, you can't deny that. You, we may not be in the first century now when Yeshua was walking in the flesh for that period of time, you know, before his death and resurrection, but we are his witnesses. You and me are his witnesses, and so also is the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen? We are his witnesses to Yeshua's life, his death, his resurrection and power, his miracles, his authority. He is now living and moving supernaturally through us, amongst us, and in us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, ru religious rulers want to kill the apostles. Verse 33. And when they heard this, they were cut to the quick and intended to kill them. But a Pharisee by the name of Gamaliel you remember him, Rav Shaul sat at his feet. This famous rabbi who was part of the Sanhedrin, Gamaliel. Listen to these, this, this, this rabbi and, and ask yourself, he's not a believer, but who is he listening to? Who is he obeying? See, even unbelievers 
can obey the voice of the Lord. Listen. A Pharisee and Gamaliel, teacher of the law, rabbi, respected by all the people, stood up in the council and gave orders to put the men outside for a short time. And he said to them, men of Israel, take care what you propose to do to these men. For some time ago, Thudius rose up claiming to be a somebody. A group of about 400 men joined with him, but he was killed and all those who followed him were dispersed. Yeah, came to nothing. After this, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away people after him. And he too perished. And all those who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I say to you, stay away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or action is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them or else you might, may even be found fighting against God. Who was this rabbi listening to? He was hearing from the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Oh, I, I, just, I, I think Gamaliel must have, must have gotten saved. I hope he did. Amen? I hope he did. I, I think he did. I don't know. I'll find out. And if I find out, I'm going to give him a great big hug when I see him. Amen? And they took his advice. And at, you see, all these people who are fighting against pro-life pregnancy crisis centers and the pro-life people and supporters and, and, and fighting to just, uh, you know, a, Establish that, listen, I'm sorry, there's only one kind of marriage. It's the marriage that's in the Bible. It's a man and a woman in holy matrimony before the eyes of God. There's only that kind of marriage and no other kind of marriage. Can I hear an amen? And I'm sorry if a, a child is born, a male, he is a male. I don't even care if he has surgery and takes hormones. He is a male. He is a boy and a girl is a girl and there's nothing else that exists except in the vain imaginations of people. Amen? I don't know. They can pass laws all they want. As far as I'm concerned, they are no laws. All right? Not before God. Hallelujah. I'm not very biblical, uh, politically correct, am I? <laughs> and I never want to be. You know, if this is of God, he says, you will not be able to overthrow it or else you may be found fighting against God. And all those that come against the pregnancy crisis centers and come against true believers who are standing for righteousness, standing for biblical principles, standing for ma marriage between a man and a woman, standing be before gender, you know, the, the, the reality is God made them male and female, period. They're all fighting against God. That's who they're fighting against. And um, <clears throat> so they took his advice, verse 40, and after calling the apostles in, well, let's give them a good beating before we let them go, amen? They flogged them and ordered them not to speak in the name of Yeshua, released them. And so they went on their way from the presence of the council, rejoicing. Wait a minute, you just got beaten with whips. They went their way rejoicing that they had been considered worthy to suffer shame for his name. Wow. Because they were walking and obeying the voice of the Lord. The power of the Ruach HaKodesh was anointing them and they considered themselves, this was an honor worthy of suffering shame. for his name. And every day in the temple, from house to house, they kept right on teaching and preaching Yeshua. Wow. Mm. Turn with me and we'll 
kind of close our message here. Yochanan chapter 10. Yochanan chapter 10. Those of you who know your scriptures know where I'm going, I'm sure. Yochanan chapter 10, verse 1. Truly, truly, I say to you, Yeshua is speaking, he who did not enter uh, by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, like through the window or back door, is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Who's, who's the door? Yeshua. Amen. And to him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. Say that with me. And the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name. Courtney. Joy. Mark. You know. Chris. <laughs> Soup's on. <laughs> James. <laughs> and he calls his own sheep by name. And he leads them out. And when he puts forth all of his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Say with me, because they know his voice. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will hear my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Whose voice will we obey? Amen? Amen. Whose voice will we obey? Thank you, Father God. Father, I thank you that make your voice clearer and clearer and stronger like the song we just sang, you know, it begins sometimes in the morning when we awake, the whispers, and let it grow stronger. And let us, Lord, uh, every day make Aliyah to only the shepherd's voice. Let us go up from slumber, from sleep, from whatever's going on in our brain, and to hear your voice and let it grow stronger. Let it grow clearer as we study your word, as we spend time with you. In the mighty name of Yeshua. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you, fill you with his presence, his shadow. And may he give you shalom, his peace, because the world didn't give it to us, and? But yes, B'Shem Yeshua Meshikainu, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat.